So today I am super excited for today's conversation. I always say that, but I really genuinely always am excited. Um, today I'm especially excited because I have Karen Page on with us and she is a human design expert. If you do not know what that is, you are going to learn all about it today. She's actually going to read me and I'm a little nervous, but excited. Um, so before we hop into today's conversation, I like to start off by asking you, how are you? Um, P, M, S. So P is physically, M is mentally, and S is spiritually. So how are you doing today, Karen? <laughs> Well, one, thanks for having me. I'm doing really well. I'm so excited to be here and have this conversation. Physically, I'm feeling very energized. Um, I like to do my yoga and, you know, go to the gym, do what I can do. So got that check mentally doing well. I did my meditation. Um, the sun is shining. That always helps. And spiritually, I'm just like tuned in, feeling very present, feeling good, feeling great. How are you? You know? Good. I love that. I love it. Um, I was telling you earlier behind the scenes that I just came back from um, a class at the gym. So I'm feeling good. I, I really did not want to go. But I said, you know what, just be stay committed to yourself. So I went, it was a good workout. Um, so physically, I'm good. Mentally, I'm, I'm good. We had a really rainy week. And today the sun is shining. So my spirits are lifted. The kids are home for spring break. And spiritually, I think, yeah, I I have an open heart and an open mind. So feeling good. Feeling good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, I'm happy to dive in. You guide me. Yes. Like, where do you want to start? Let's, let's do it. So let's start off with what is human design for those who may have not heard of, of it before? So very simply, it's a... It's a system of concepts for personal development and understanding. Um, I like to think of it as an extension of someone's astrological natal chart. So if someone has ever you know, been interested in their zodiac, had their chart read, things like that, human design is like an extra layer of specificity that you can put on it. Um, it's, it's also kind of like a mixtape, like it blends the Hindu chakra system, um, the Chinese I Ching, which is like an oracle. Um, almost like a an ancient oracle deck. And also like quantum physics, like we're energetic beings. We live in the universe. We have auras and energies that we come into contact with our outer world, et cetera. So it's a really cosmic personal development system. It's not something that's maybe more like straightforward, like Myers-Briggs or Enneagram or something like that. Gotcha. Gotcha. So a lot of the people who listen to the podcast have their backgrounds and their like foundation in like the Judeo-Christian tradition. So most of us are like, you know, have Christian backgrounds. What are your thoughts in how that may interplay with human design or is it just completely separate? It has nothing to do with like the spiritual per se. I mean, that's a really philosophical question because you know, it reminds me of that India Ari song, all of this is not by chance. You know what I mean? So whatever your entry point is to you understanding yourself and you being able to know this is who I am, this is the journey and the purpose that I'm here to fulfill in this lifetime. How do I get more in alignment with that? So I'm not just out here confused and frustrated and right. bewildered, right? So I don't like to think of it as an either or situation. But um, more of like a both and like take what you like and leave what you don't find, mm -hmm. find what you need out of it. And if it doesn't resonate with you, that's OK, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's been my life uh, philosophy the past like 10 years or so. I've learned that for me, my opinion is that like God, the creator, has given us so many tools that like, we really weren't thrown here just to figure this out blindly. Um, we have different tools. And again, whatever resonates with you, you know, lean into it. And if it doesn't, that's all good too. So how did you become involved or um, an expert at human design? What led you here? What led me here was um, my own personal journey where I was just kind of like at a crossroads. It, it felt like, okay, I could, a professional crossroads really. Mm -hmm. Um I was working as a freelance web designer and I got hired at an agency. So 
I was kind of feeling like, well, I still have all this entrepreneurial spirit. What do I do with that? You know what I mean? It's still, I feel it very strongly. And this was simultaneously happening in the summer of 2020 when we were all in lockdown, but also having a huge collective awakening of social justice and what it means to really be living authentically in this world. Yeah. And so that felt like a lot. And I wanted to have somebody help me sort through all of that. So um, I found a mindset coach and I was really intentional about, uh, intentional about wanting to work with a Black mindset coach who really centered the Black experience, was not going to come with any like bypassing or any type of, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, he, She's pretty liberal. Let's just say that. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so on our first conversation, we're just getting to know each other. And she was like, do you happen to know your human design? Because I just kind of think it would help me understand like how to communicate with you. Cause it's like, there's different personality types similar to, you know, if you have an astrology sign, there's different personality types within those 12. Right. And I was like, I don't even know what this is. And so she said, okay, go online. Let me just give you a blog. You can look up and a place where you can get your free chart. Um, mostly just because she was curious. And so I followed her instructions. I got my chart off the internet and it was a whole bunch of jargon and shapes and, and numbers and colors. I didn't understand any of it, but it said, your not self emotional theme is frustration. And I was like, I know a little something about emotions and I know a lot about feeling frustrated because basically up until my whole life, if I was really looking back and being honest, frustration was like my default emotion. Mm. And so I was like, okay, if this is a personality, like personal development system that can really help me understand why that's true, why I've been feeling frustrated, I'm very curious about that, right? Um, and so then I just kind of started reading as much information as I could about it. And it all just really clicked for me. Like, like again, um, you know, thinking about things like Myers-Briggs or Enneagram or even astrology, that stuff didn't really make sense. But something about reading human design, I was like, I get this. And so then I was like, um, starting to do readings for like my friends and my family. And I just so happened at that, that agency where I was hired as a, a web developer, we opened up a coaching program to mentor other women web designers. And so in that program, I started noticing that there was actually a space to help the, the women there get to understand how they move and maybe why things are not working in their business the way they'd like. And we can use human design as a tool to kind of help guide you in your decision-making process. So, um, and then with that, I was like, I would really actually like to take this seriously and really like get a certification or just study. And I was like, I th I'm just going to keep my eyes open. My I set the intention. Something's probably going to show up where I'm going to be like, oh, yep, yeah, that's the person for me. And so that happened. I started following um, a woman named AC Brown, who's a really uh, prominent yeah. Black voice in human design. And yeah. she was just like, hey, y'all, I'm starting a certification, like cohort one, who wants to join? And I was like, this is literally the perfect, like just the most synchronous thing. So I signed up for that, um, got my certification, took everything to a much deeper level than I ever imagined. And now here I am today. That's dope. You know, it's funny. A um, couple of things. A, I feel like whenever I look at like astrology and the zodiac, it just never feels like it fits me. Um, so I, I definitely can relate to, to that piece. And then also AC Brown is who actually introduced me to the whole world of human design. I think it was back in either 2020 or 2021. Um, she had this like virtual like retreat, like a couple of hours where she essentially taught us how to like, you know, figure out what we are. And it was what really made sense for me. I'm just like, okay, me being a Libra son, like, I don't feel like I fit the Libra son characteristic. Like, it never sounds like me, but this actually sounds like me. And it speaks to the frustrations that I've experienced throughout my life. And 
So like, yeah. So with that being said, I am excited to just go ahead and to jump into this. So you are going to do my reading and I gave you, so what are some things that people are going to need for them to look into their own um, human design? Okay. So you'll need your birth details. So the time you were born, the location you were born, and then your birth date. Um, and if you want to follow along, you can actually go to my website, karenpage.com. That's Karen with a Y, page with an I. So go to karenpage.com slash chart, and you can get your free chart instantly if you'd like. Um, but that's really all you need. So again, this is where it kind of gets into more of like, it is a little bit cosmic and it is a little bit woo woo. Like, so birth details, grab that. Um, and then, so thank you for providing yours to me. And now I'm looking at your chart. And again, there's a lot of stuff there. And so there's a lot of entry points of, okay, well, how, how can I analyze you or how can I read you? Right. But what I like to do is look at your aura type. Um, you're a projector. So there's a certain set of characteristics and qualities about someone like you. Um, and I also like to look at your authority, which is um, kind of the place that helps you, the place where you can turn to within yourself to help you make decisions um, that are going to feel very aligned for you, feel like they're rooted in your truth. And then I also like to look at all of the shapes in the middle. There's nine different shapes. It almost kind of looks like you know, somebody's chakra or like somebody sitting down cross-legged head to toe, you know? So just taking a look at that, I can already tell you about yourself. All right. right? Let's go. So okay. before you actually do that, um, so if somebody has never heard of the different types, so you said that I'm a projector, mm -hmm. what are the other human design? Um, is it aura types? Is yeah, you got it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there's five altogether generators and manifesting generators those are the two most common aura types about seven out of i would say one in three people are generators one in three people are um projectors yeah 30 percent, 30 percent. yeah then followed by projectors um wait did i say that wrong generators manifesting generators are the most common then followed by projectors okay. then manifestors and then reflectors so okay. those are your five, right? So okay. as a projector, what I already see about you, and I can find this in different places, but what I already would know to be true for you is that you are someone who is here to help guide and facilitate, teach, mentor, bring the best out of others, mm -hmm. but not necessarily do the work for them to bring the best out of them. Really hear like like Whoopi Goldberg and Sister Act Two. You know what I mean? She's she comes in, she helps the children, and then she goes back to her life type of thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. And I also see that your authority that you would want to turn to to help guide your decision making process, whether it's the most mundane thing, like what do I want to buy from the grocery store, or whether it's a life changing decision, like where do I want to live? Where do I want to work? Who do I want to be in relationship with? That's your spleen. That's why it's called splenic. And that's a little jargony, but basically that means if you really want to do well at this game called life, listen to your intuition and your instincts and really embrace your ability to move spontaneously. Even if you don't know why you're doing this, you can just sense, yo, I was I was moving forward. I was walking in a, in a straight line and then something told me to turn right and I do not know why, but I listened to that instinct. And then boom, I'm, I saw somebody I haven't seen in years and they were like, how are you doing? Oh, by the way, how's ha such and such happening? Did you know I was just thinking about you? And I, there's an opportunity that I think would be great for you. Da, 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 da. And you never would have had that if you hadn't listened to that little voice that said, hey, why don't you just turn right real quick? Very true. Th is, this, is this resonating? Very true. And every time I have a regret is because I've ignored my intuition. That part. Because I'm like, well, I don't have the data to back it up. Mm -mm. Now I've learned, like, if I have a gut feeling, just, just lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. And so for you as a projector, um, 
you have a very particular strategy for moving through this life, which aligns with um, your authority, which is your intuition, right? So your intuition is who you check in with to make sure that you're doing what feels in alignment for you. But your strategy for being in this life is to wait for invitations to come to you as opposed to trying to initiate and go make stuff happen, right? So this strategy, waiting for invitations, can feel mm, maybe a little uncomfortable because sometimes folks will be like, well, what am I supposed to do? Just sit on the couch and wait for the phone to ring? Not necessarily. You know, go live your life. Do your thing. Have fun. Like, follow your bliss. But I would imagine that maybe some of the, the most aligned opportunities that have come to you have actually come because someone said, hey, you know that thing that you like to do? I thought of you. There's actually an opportunity for you over here. Would you want to come over here and do that? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so with projectors specifically, I've worked with people who are like, every job I've ever gotten has been from a hookup or an invitation or somebody told me. Like, I've wanted to move across the country and someone would say things like, I'm... I'm leaving the country and I do you want to house it for me for the next six months? And it's like the perfect, most aligned opportunity, but it's not something that you needed to chase or initiate. It comes mm-hmm. in, right? You know, um, the, what I struggle with in that sense, and I agree a thousand percent, what I struggle with is like the conflicting messages that we get. Um, just from society that, you know, you need to be a go-getter. You need to go find opportunities because, you know, things aren't going to come to you. So sometimes I feel like, well, girl, like nobody's going to come knock on my door (laughs) with an opportunity. So I need to like go make that opportunity. So that's been a struggle. Right, right. So my my follow-up question there would be when you did go try to make those things happen, how did that work out for you? Usually with just frustration. Um, It has not been... So in in full transparency, for the past like two years, I would say, I'm really trying to establish my business, right? And I feel that I've been like, I can't be stagnant and just be waiting around for things to happen. So I would pitch myself or try to network with people and try to introduce myself. um, And it just has not panned out. Um, So yeah, I struggle with the idea of just waiting for things to come um, when I'm getting these messages, like just from society that like, you know, you got to go get it, you know? I do know 100% and that's going to get you caught up. Like that's the, that's the (laughs) ironic thing is um, most of the aura types and I would actually not say most, all of the aura types are told by society to do the opposite of what they're really meant to do. Mm. like that go out and make it happen storyline that we're all taught in in society does not apply to 90 percent of us Mm -hmm. and so when we listen to that and we don't check in with ourselves or even have an awareness of like well what actually has worked for me Mm. then it it can fill you with frustration. But like back to this idea of the waiting thing for you as a projector, what I always tell projectors is go out and do your thing. Go live your life. Go do what you enjoy. And the more you do that, the more you will attract the invitations that are in alignment with where you want to go. Right. The tricky thing for projectors is sometimes you want to like tap people on the shoulder and be like, excuse me, do you see me? Do you recognize me? I'm I'm here. I'm great. I'm ready to guide you. But people don't want to ta- don't want to receive your invitations. It's it's that I like to say you can't teach somebody who doesn't want to be taught. You can't coach somebody who doesn't want to be coached, mm-hmm. you know, and that's why I go back to like references like movies and stuff like Sister Act Two, if you've ever seen it with Whoopi Goldberg, she is living her life as a headliner in Las Vegas, okay? And then the nuns come to her and they're like, Whoopi, could you, Sister Mary Clarence, could you please help us? Remember that last time? You're so good at that thing that you did. Could you please come help us again? She comes in, swoops down, helps the children, and then goes back and lives her life, you know? And so that's the, the trick is you're not waiting there for nothing. 
you're living your life. And the more you live, the more what you need comes back to you. Mm, that is a word. That is a word. Yeah. 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 I need to receive that and like embody that. <laughs> It's very hard to do, I think, especially even taking into consideration what it means to be a Black woman in America, what it means to be a Black yeah. woman in this world. Yeah. There's a lot specifically to the projector or a type that is about receiving and is about trusting. And that can be very conflicting to messages that we receive. Yep. Right? Um. Yeah, yeah. The, the majority of us, and, and I say us because me, have very much so, like, you know, I've been conditioned to feel that, like, I need to be giving, 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 doing, doing, doing um, in order to be, quote, valuable, you know, and to prove my worth. Um, so it's hard to accept help. Um, sometimes it's hard to feel like I'm even worthy of you seeing me and um, wanting to help me, whatever it is. So yeah, it, it, it's conflicting symptoms. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the word conditioning because that's another part of human design is kind of like once you see your chart and you start to understand your energy, like it really is a very unique energy that only you have when you caught air, when you were born, when you came onto this earth. It's like, the planets and the stars all align just for you. And this is your blueprint, right? So again, most of us as little itty bitty, itty bitty children are actually following that blueprint mm -hmm. without even knowing it. And then somebody comes in and says, don't do that. Don't be like that. That's not how someone like you is supposed to behave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so then the process, once you start to unpack your human design is actually to decondition from all of those stories and all of those messages and really explore what was I told and did that work for me? You know, and I'll, I'll do sessions with with clients and I'm just reading and they're like, I feel validated. I feel seen. I feel heard. I kind of knew this all along, but I wasn't doing the thing that felt like me. And I'm like, okay, well now hold yourself in compassion, but also this is part of the work of realizing I need to decondition all this stuff that was never there to serve me, you know? Yeah, for sure. Oof. I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg too. Like we could go <laughs> even farther in there. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so there's some really unique things that you have about yourself in your chart. When I'm looking at the shapes, those are called energy centers and there's nine of them, right? And so you have a very unique quality as a projector in that your throat center is defined and the throat center is where you're experiencing your energy to be able to communicate, to be able to manifest things and make things happen. Most projectors do not have a defined throat, which means that for you, because it's defined, that energy is really strong. It's really radiating from within you and it's meant to radiate out and reach people. Mm -hmm. um, most projectors don't have that. So that, that kind of goes back into this thing of trying to speak, trying to be heard, and maybe your message is falling on deaf ears, right? But for you, that energy is hitting different. When you speak, it hits different. It is very powerful and it has the potential to like reach others in a way that maybe other projectors don't have uh, as much strength behind that, right? So it's not a surprise that you have a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And yeah, it's mm -hmm. interesting. And just um, thinking about how the podcast even came to be. I just was living and just like, well, let me just be curious and, and see what this can be. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like your podcast is hitting with people? Um, with, with my people. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the, the, the tribe, as I call them, um, are pretty engaged and like, let me know what has been impactful in the show and, and things. So I, yeah. I would say so. I would say so. Yeah. 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 
and I also see a lot of, like I talked about definition and, and undefinition. And essentially what that means is wherever your energy is defined, like those nine energy centers, wherever it's defined, it'll be colored in on your chart. And that essentially means that the energy that you experience in that particular department, so to speak, is very, it's, it's concrete to you. It's very consistent to you. You know, it's yours. If anything, it's going to radiate out and maybe have the potential to, um, to touch someone else, to impact someone else. Whereas if that center is not colored in, it means it's undefined, Mm -hmm. which means, you know, that energy there is subject to change. It, it fluctuates. It's very much like an open window. So you're taking in the energy from the outer world. So from your environment, from your relationships, from work, even from the media that you consume, right? And so I see for you, you have more undefined centers than you have defined centers, which is very common for a projector. But when I see that, I I invite people to one, get really clear on what they like, what their values are, what their boundaries are, and make sure that they have a really good grounding practice to be able to discharge the energy that you take in from the world Mm -hmm. and come back to yourself. Because, you know, just seeing what your centers are defined, you, you are somebody, if the thoughts and the inspiration can come in and can be very influential emotionally, there's a lot of openness there for being sensitive to other people's emotions. And maybe if if somebody Mm -hmm. around you is feeling miserable, you might feel miserable as well. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of pressure to do things and to get things going, get things started. Um, And also, but also a lot of potential for, because of that openness, there's a lot of potential for empathy, sensitivity, um, being hyper aware of like, how other people are feeling, even psychic gifts. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you have very potent dreams. Yes. Yeah. I do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, hmm. Really interesting. Um, this all makes so much sense. I, I was just, as you were talking, I was thinking about how, um, like my mood and my spirit and my energy is sometimes it is very reliant on what's happening in the world, right? Um, So thinking about not only what we have going on here in the States, um, which is a mess, but like what's happening over in Palestine, um, in Gaza, to to those people, like I don't know, like I sometimes I get frustrated, like how am I supposed to like continue living when I feel like all the things that they told us to do, like back in October, November, December, um, we've done like we to the politicians, our representatives and all those things and nothing has happened. So long story short, with all of that, like it really, it, yeah, like I feel like I oftentimes am not so grounded um, because of all that's happening and how heavy the world is. No doubt, right? And so that's a completely normal circumstance to be to find yourself in as a human being. I would be surprised if you didn't feel anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so again, it's like there's an invitation there for you to to be present, to understand, like to feel those feelings and also have the discernment to know when you have maybe had your, you've, you've reached your emotional capacity and now it's time to, to ground, to clear, to cleanse. Um, and also you, things like relying on, on those defined centers, right? So again, coming back to your splenic authority, which is where you turn for guidance in those situations, you can check in and be like, what is my intuition telling me about this situation right now? Yeah. You know, what it is if is it telling me put the phone down? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I, I, I think 
one of the reasons, not I think, I know one of the reasons why I have been since around November, December, I've been so focused on like my physical well-being is because I just know I need to figure out a way to come back to to center. Um, and that is right now through exercise. Um, and just to step away from um, the news when I can, it's, it's a hard balance. I know that it's important to be informed. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> well, I mean, and even just kind of stepping out of the human design bubble, like what what I can offer you is just like an option of check in with yourself on when it would feel like a good idea to go get informed. You know, it, would it feel good to turn on the morning news before you've done what you need to do? in your morning routine? Mm, no, that was recipe for disaster. The whole day is gone. <laughs> right? So again, it's like kind of um, being able to check in and say, okay, well, if I know that I'm a very sensitive person and I really, like literally I'm looking at your chart, there's, this, there's an energy center there called the emotional solar plexus, which is all about the energy that you feel emotionally, right? Um if you're like, I know that I'm, I'm kind of emotionally open and sensitive. So if somebody else is in pain, I'm going to feel that that pain. Mm -hmm. Then you get to decide, okay, am I at a point right now in this moment, spontaneously, mm -hmm. in, intuitively, is this the moment that I want to open up my emotions to receive something from the outer world just so I can be informed? Mm -hmm. Or would it would it be a different moment where I feel fortified, I feel grounded, and then I can check in on the news? Yeah, right. So that's, that's like putting boundaries with myself. You know, mm -hmm. like right now is not the time. Do what you need to do to like, like you said, to fortify myself, to build myself up, replenish myself, and then it's, you know turn to the outer world. Whether that is mm -hmm. like big picture or even just taking care of my kids, like more than just like the surface stuff, right? And mm -hmm. being present for my husband and such. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. And so again, this is like, this is unique to you. So somebody might be listening to this and they might be a projector, but their intuition might not be where they turn to to get uh, the clarity that they need to make that decision in the moment. It might be something like they need to check in how do they feel emotionally or they need to talk it out with a trusted friend or something like that. So that's what makes human design so unique is that we can't use this cookie cutter, one size fits all, everybody needs to go out and make it happen type of thing. Cause you are unique. That is, that's like the thing we were talking about at the, the beginning of the conversation. It's like, we were all made, nothing, nothing is wrong. Nothing is a coincidence, but you, the way you are, the, the way you are designed is unique to you. And so it's like, you have your own rule book and your own playbook. And part of it is really just understanding, okay, what do you need? You know, what do you need for boundaries? What do you need for, um, feeling safe, feeling protective, feeling joy, feeling bliss, all that that's you and the person next to you that may not be their thing. And that's okay. Yeah. Um, so you said that I, my, I think it's my splenic center. So like I go inward for like, for decision-making. Is that, mm -hmm. is that right? So what, yes, or correct me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I realized that whenever I'm going through something where I have to make like a, a big decision and I just need clarity, I remove myself from people. And I used to say that that was my toxic trait or my bad habit, but I really do not find, I don't find it helpful to go to talk about my challenges, even people that I love and I trust their advice. My thing is I need to figure out what is the issue here? Like, what is the challenge that I'm facing? Like, get clear about it. What are my options? pray about it, meditate about it. And then when I'm about to make a decision or I've made a decision, then I can actually verbalize what's going on. Is that because of my personality type? Um, or that's just, that's just me. 
<laughs> that feels like a very like projector thing to say, right? Again, so um, I actually, when you're speaking, what it's making me think of is you are basically a 60% undefined, which means you're in those energy centers that we're talking about. You're 60% susceptible to influence from the outer world. Mm -hmm. So if you naturally feel like in order for me to make a decision that's going to serve me, I need to retreat and I need to get back to self. That's 100% of like, like chef's kiss. Like you, you already cracked your own code there because it allows you to close those windows that are open to the outer world, figure out what's going on and then come back to your knowing, your sensing, which is your splenic authority. It's like, you don't even necessarily know how you know, it just comes, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. that's a great process that you've created for yourself to help you make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so again, it's like, you know, we start having these conversations and, and people tell me, just like you're telling me about experiences and I'm like, you're validating right now what's in your chart you've, like you and you may have thought these were coincidences up until now but it's like oh no 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 keep doing what you're doing you are on the right track do more of it and see what happens mm -hmm. okay um so what else do you see <laughs> i see someone who is if you're not already expressing yourself creatively in whatever that means to you, mm -hmm. I invite you to express, be a creative expression and whatever that means. Yeah. Because when you do that, you are inspiring others to be their own creative expressions. Mm. Okay. Okay. Does this resonate? Or are you like, I don't know about that part? No, it does. It does. There are a couple of things that I have for years I've been saying I want to learn about. One is photography. That's like the main thing. Literally for like, it's been 10 years now that I've just been like, let me get a camera. I just want to like just start experimenting. And I told myself that this is going to be the year that I do it. Yeah, we are almost in April and I have not picked up a camera yet, but it's still on my list <laughs> as something that I just want to learn. Um, just, just cause I'm curious about it. And I think, yeah, I'm just curious about that part. I, I have never done anything creatively there, but yeah. Okay. okay. So well, <laughs> something is telling me that like, you will just randomly, I don't be like doing chores, washing dishes or, you know, something totally unrelated. And you'll hear a little voice that's like, go, go, go get a camera right now. Mm -hmm. If you hear that or if you feel that, go do it. Like yeah. literally like drop what you're doing and go get a camera. Even if that means you have to go to the store to get it. Yeah. 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 So with that part, it's like, um, one, creative expression. You already had an idea of what you wanted. So that's not a coincidence. Okay, cool. Because you could have said a, a million and one different creative expressions, right? Mm -hmm. And two, that, that again, that authority being your spleen center, which is your intuition and your instinct is like, you'll know when the time is right. And until that time comes, don't even worry about it. Like, don't stress yourself out of like, oh man, it's almost, we're halfway into the year and I haven't done that thing I wanted to right. do. Because when- the time comes, you will be moved to do it and it will be the exact right time that you need. Yeah. I'm working on teaching myself that, that like, what is time? You know, like I, I'm always putting myself on this deadline. For, like most things don't really require a deadline. Um, mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Myself that. Okay. So again, this, this, one feels like a story that we're all told, like this doesn't feel like a story unique to you, like deadlines, follow through, finish stuff, finish what you started, like 
same lane, you know, especially career, like same lane from the time you turn 18 to the time you retire. There's, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. but for someone like you, again, because of your splenic authority, you're a spontaneous person. Like you are allowed to be spontaneous. So part of it might be for you is giving yourself the permission to say, okay, deadlines, sure. You know, everybody got stuff they got to get done in this world. We all have bills to pay on the date, right? And right. also, I get to be a little bit more spontaneous than the average person because that's my inner authority. And so that's, that's how I'm meant to move, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So how do I use that um, in terms of building my own business, right? Um, Because the way that I'm thinking about it is like, there's like a framework of like your business, right? Whatever that business is. And if you are a projector or somebody with a similar aura type, um, how do you use that spontaneity or somebody with a similar chart, I should say, how do you use that spontaneity to um, allow you to be successful? You know what I mean? Like yeah, your professional life. I get from my personal life, mm-hmm. but from my professional life. Well, the thing about projectors is you have an uh, a, an ability to work very efficiently, right? And so that doesn't like you know, even if you didn't have a splenic authority projectors, y'all are efficient. Like you can get things done, and so for you, it might be. Um, Re, um, redefining what consistency means for you. Like maybe you're someone who actually, when you feel that burst of energy, you batch stuff ahead of time. You honor the fact that you're like, I'm in a mode of efficiency, spontaneously, let's go. Mm-hmm. And then when that that burst is done, you allow yourself to rest, right? So I would say, you know, for example, like marketing, maybe your marketing isn't scheduled out beautifully on Instagram 30 days in advance. Maybe you're someone who's like, let me just tweet this real quick or put this on threads real quick because Mm -hmm. the mood struck, right? Or you grab that camera and you're doing more spontaneous behind the scenes stuff that isn't perfectly curated, but it's real and it's in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And then also allowing yourself the permission to be like, Everybody is telling me that consistency means showing up every day, like planning ahead. But that probably, that's not going to work for me if I'm being honest. That never really worked for me. Right. And so, yeah, (laughs) I can just let that one go. Right. The other thing, too, is just even thinking about how many items are you putting on your to do list in a day? And is that really realistic? Because you're someone who's actually, again, here to rest more than you implement because facilitators and guides and teachers don't necessarily complete the tasks. They manage the tasks that need to be completed, Mm -hmm. right? So I would invite you to, you know, consider hiring a virtual assistant or an online business manager who can carry out your vision so that you're not exhausted and you have more time to be in the moment. And maybe they're the ones who are like, okay, well, I'm going to schedule the things that you spontaneously created in your marketing, you know, and then I'll take care of it. Right. Yeah. Um, So ultimately, I just finally found a a virtual assistant that I think is going to work out good. Like I just had a conversation this week and she's already been on it. So Yes, I'm feeling good. <laughs> okay, okay. On the right I, path. <laughs> I mean, honestly and truly, so much of it is really just accepting that your business gets to look like whatever you want it to look like. Mm-hmm. And and if somebody feels, if you, you know, if you're got that little voice from the outside world, that's like your business needs to look like this. And this is the only way to be successful. Yeah. Flip that script because here's a big thing for you as a projector. And I remember earlier we talked about um, the not self emotion for me that I experienced was frustration. Every aura type has two emotions that when they feel it, they are being sent a very clear message. Okay. 
It's called the not self emotion and the signature emotion. So for you as a projector, your signature emotion, when you feel that, it's letting you know that you are on the right track. You're moving into alignment. You're using your aura and your energy in a way that's right for you. For you, it's success, but on your own terms. Mm -hmm. Not the cookie cutter, American dream, six-figure business, $10,000 a month. Like if that's because those are the messages we're being told. Now it's seven figures. Now it's this. Now it's have Mm -hmm. a team, grow a team, da 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 always the goalpost keeps moving right so for you you have to figure out what is your definition of success and how can you be experiencing that every day in the most Mm -hmm. mundane ways yeah you know what i mean um and so so moving into that direction starting to get curious and be like okay what do i need to feel successful maybe i need a virtual assistant and less time on instagram right (laughs) right boom that feels really successful and so then on the flip side being mindful of if things are not in alignment and and your energy is is off and not being you know used correctly for you in a situation you'll probably feel a sense of bitterness and maybe bitterness isn't the word that you would use to describe that emotion but it's kind of like that sensation of why is everybody else getting theirs and I'm not getting mine? Why aren't people seeing me? Yep. Why aren't people acknowledging my greatness? I'm here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And like resentment, like, you know, you do all this work and like for what, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yeah. So all of that is to say, like, if you're feeling that, it's just it's the it's just the universe, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it, sending you signs. They're like, look, babe, what the way you've been doing it, it's not working. There's another way. There's probably lots of other different ways. Mm-hmm. So let's be honest instead of continuing to try to force this square peg into this round hole, babe. Like there is a <laughs> there's a square for that peg, and there is a circle for that hole. Like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That that makes sense. And yeah, that resonates. Okay. For okay. sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Ooh, this was um, really enlightening and also um, like, conf- like it confirmed a lot of, of what I, I've learned about myself. Um, yeah. So um, how can people, hold on, before we do that, um, was that the entire reading or did you want to keep going? I mean, I feel, I feel <laughs> like you got to, okay, let me actually just say one more thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to your business mm-hmm. and when it comes to you in general, but when it comes to your business, you have all the energy, you, you will do what you need to do to earn that income. That's not a problem. But for you, where you will really see alignment and is when you are passionate about the work that you're doing and you want to show up every day and do it. Yep. yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So all money ain't good money. You don't have sure. a problem. You are, you are taken care of. You know how to manage resources. So what will serve you is moving away from the idea that the money needs to come first and that's what's going to make the decisions and really leaning into intuitively what am I passionately drawn towards? Let's go over there and the money will come. Mm. That makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. I think the the, um, underlying piece of this conversation, what I received is really like close close the doors close the windows and just come back to myself you know it's you got it it's like take your shoes off after you out here in the world before you step into your house Mm -hmm. you know wash your hands wash this wash the city off your body it's that same principle and when you do that it will be so much easier for you to hear your intuition and let it guide you where you need to go Mm. i love that um 
So, you know, what? I, I was telling you in the beginning that I did a reading with, not with, but she taught us how to do a reading, AC Brown, a couple of years ago. And that's how I learned about this. And she also mentioned doing the chart for the people in your family. And mm-hmm. I did it for my kids and for my husband. So my question is, and I totally forget what they are, but my question is, how can people use human design um, to interact with the people in their house. So for example, my main focus would be how do I parent my children best according to their aura design? And can, is that even a thing also? It, it's 100% a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is a really good question. I would say that you know, without knowing the aura types of the people in your house, mm-hmm. um, kind of coming back to you again you're as your or you're here to to help the people around you bring out the best in themselves mm-hmm. but the way that you do that is to let them do it for themselves right so figuring out ways um to help your like just and to take it away from you and just kind of be more like hypothetical mm-hmm. Instead of cleaning the child's room, a projector is best at helping the child figure out the, the the optimal way to get them to clean their own room. Yeah. That makes sense. You know? That makes sense. Um, and you might really want to get up in there after they're done and be like, let me actually tidy it up a little bit more because they didn't do it quite right. But like they're not go- they're not going to learn that way. It's yeah. about it's like being a coach, you know, being like a basketball coach. The basketball coach don't take the basketball out of the kid's hand and, and dunk it in the net. True. Show them show them how to dunk it in the way that's best for them. And maybe they actually don't dunk. Maybe they're more of a three-point shot. You know what I mean? And, and that's still good. Yeah, for sure. Right, right, right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And you know what's interesting is that I, for the past, like, couple of years, um, for my old, my oldest is nine, And what I've been drilling into him is that, babe, one day I am not going to be here. While I'm here, like, of course, I I got you, but I want you to be able to do things for yourself for when I'm not here. Um, And that's been like the conversation that I'm constantly having. And then I ask myself, like, is that too morbid? But I don't know. It's just... For me, I have like this urge to like let him know that I'm teaching you little by little how to care for yourself and how to support yourself, you know? Um, So I'm going to help you do these things or teach you how to do it. So that way one day I can just be hands off about it. Yeah. Um, Yeah. 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 And, and again, kind of like understanding that the aura types actually all work together. And that's what I really love about human design as well is like, there's so much potential for teamwork and collaboration and literally almost like connecting to somebody else's energy and getting a little bit of their magic, Mm -hmm. you know? So for example, I'm a generator, Mm -hmm. um, And my mom is a projector. And I love to tell this story because I love to sew as a hobby to make clothes. But -hmm. when I'm left to myself, it's really hard for me to turn that switch on and to like follow through and finish with a sewing project. Like it could take me six months to do like one little t-shirt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my mom, she also knows how to sew. She's a projector, which means she's really efficient. Remember we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. I can just be in her presence and I will finish constructing three garments in like one weekend. Wow. And she, because I, I feel safe with her because I know she knows she, cause she's that mentor. She's that guide, Mm -hmm. but she doesn't take the garment out of my hands and finish sewing it for me. She just is there and I'm, tapping into her energy and boom I'm efficient just like she is and she brought the best out of me like it's the best garment I've ever constructed you know what I mean yeah so that's interesting my um oldest I believe he's a generator or manifesting generator I forget but one thing that I realized about him is that he'll get his work done if I'm just sitting next to him I'm not doing the work um but just my presence I'm like doing my own work like he'll just mm-hmm. all right zero in and like get his assignments done um rather than if I just leave him to do it maybe in the living room or in his bedroom by himself like it's mm-hmm. just not happening um, yeah so yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's magic. It's like, it's so wild. <laughs> it's like, it's like plugging into somebody else, like, like a phone charger, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I would say, you know, before you, it's that, it's that oxygen mask thing. Like before you can help somebody else, you have to know how to help yourself. And so it always starts with, you know, learning about yourself, doing your own inner work, and then that actually will radiate out no matter what your aura type is. Mm, beautiful beautiful this was so good thank you thank you thank you karen so how can the people connect with you on social media what is your website are you taking clients at the moment all of those good things <laughs> yes so i am taking clients at the moment you can find out everything you need at karenpage.com again that's karen with the y page with an i i like to hang out on instagram and threads at karen page um yeah, and you can, if even if you just have a general question, you can get my email address from my website as well. Okay. So yeah. perfect. So I will drop all that information down below in the show notes. That way, it's an easy click to follow her, go visit her website, um, schedule a consultation, all of those good things. I am super super grateful that we had this conversation. Thank you so so much. I Thank you for that. having me. Thank That's you. I appreciate perfect. you.